What's the playbook we're currently seeing out of Russia at the moment? I think it's been a standard combination of things that we've seen before with an influx of some news messaging. It is a reiteration of the narrative that NATO expansion has driven Russia to defend itself, which is obviously a disinformation tactic designed to justify the current attacks and a lot of the probably uh, atrocities that we'll be seeing increasingly so. Another emphasis is being put at dissuading ordinary Russians from taking a stand against the conflict and against the war. And I think we're soon are also going to be seeing uh, an argument that those domestic protests are being driven by external uh, CIA fomented, uh, mm. those points that we've seen before. So in combination of targeting domestic audiences as well as looking externally, it's tools that Russia has uh, honed in its previous misinformation and disinformation campaigns in Ukraine and then in Syria, and now we're seeing it repeated again in a way that it's been difficult to tackle for those media companies that you discussed earlier. Yeah, Brett, difficult to tackle, and particularly when Russia is sort of saying no longer wants to be using the, the, the meta platform in that respect. How do you see social media companies such as YouTube, oh my Google, Alphabet, Meta's, Facebook, and Instagram? How do you how do you see them being able to respond to this in the real time? Yeah, I think it's going to be a real moment of reckoning. For the U.S. social media companies, I mean, for years they have tried to be neutral platforms where they have allowed different perspectives to exist. Yes, they have labeled Russian state media outlets as being Russian state media outlets, but they've also labeled U.S. government-funded state media outlets. I think at some point they may be forced into taking sides here, and frankly, that choice may not be theirs because I think the Russian government is going to continue to crack down on Western social media companies. Of course, we saw that today. But I think it's it's possible, if not likely, at some point that the Russian government, if this content, if this conflict continues to escalate, that they will just cut off access to Twitter, Facebook, Google for their own domestic population. And to that end, Rita, how effective would that be? Of course, we all know a VPN when we want to use one. But I'm interested as to what outlets already people are using. How much perhaps Ukraine Rus Russian people have preempted the fact that it might be harder to access certain Western providers. Absolutely. And I think in modern society, you can never really hermetically seal a country anymore, especially a country that has already been integrated into um, the outside world. We're not talking about North Korea here uh, or even China. We're talking about a country that has been, Ukraine itself has been fully integrated into Europe and even the great parts of Russia are been European facing. So the apps that even if we're seeing, you know, reduced access to Facebook. Uh, we just talked about YouTube being a meaningful platform that regular Russians follow. They also use WhatsApp and Telegram, and those are apps that will continue to be a way for people to communicate. And at the same time, unfortunately, we're also seeing the spread of disinformation there. So I don't think Russia will be able to hermetically seal um, the internet as we know it here, but there's no argument that they will try to control the information that is reaching Russian citizens much more tightly. And Brett, to, to that point, you know, how how was it a good way of layman terms to be ensuring that you're not being targeted by misinformation? That we're not. I mean, we just heard of the cyber attacks that could occur, the ways in which they're sending text messages to people and the like. How do you feel that, from a social media perspective, people can really try to, with rigor, understand what's true, what's not? Russia has significant information capabilities. And that starts, of course, with their state media outlets that are very active, they're very successful across multiple social media platforms. Those are the easy ones to deal with because we know what they are, they're attributable. So they can be labeled, uh, information consumers understand where the information is coming from and the intent behind it. What gets a little bit trickier is Russia also has significant capabilities in the covert space. So we know that they've run troll farms. They've run pages presenting themselves as being sort of genuine American uh, political opinion pages, but of course have been connected back to Russia. So they have ways of messaging and a capability that doesn't make it entirely clear where the information is coming from. This is even very difficult 
for the social media companies to ferret out. Mm. So as information consumers, I think we just have to remain uh, vigilant and very skeptical because Russia has ways of reaching us that don't necessarily come through outlets that identify themselves as having a connection to the Russian government. And Rita, very briefly, the amount that's been spent by certain companies to beef up the AI, to ensure they can take down bots, to, you know, to be a fact checker of choice, do you think that's enough? Is there still so much work to be done or have they man done all they can to a certain extent? I think there's a lot more to be done and not just in the that automatic uh, false actor bot space. There's a lot to be done in an area that we're uncomfortable to deal with. And it is the fact that, you know, like Brett mentioned, there are what appears to be legitimate Western political opinion formers that are then later discovered to be Russian bots or Russian uh, influencers masquerading somebody else. At the same time, we are also dealing with actual real people in the West who are of political influence one way or another, mm. who are, whether intentionally or unintentionally, end up amplifying a lot of the Russian messaging. And that is something that I think Americans and people throughout Europe should be much more cognizant of, 